who's to blame for the struggles of the Phoenix Suns? Yeah, I, I think um, you know, I I think it doesn't solely fall on Chris Paul, but I definitely think he's got a lot of responsibility. You know, it, it's funny every every day we we come down here, uh, you know, in the man cave in your basement. Uh, we come down here to you know get ready to do the show, and ESPN's on in the background, and and what do we hear them talking about? Oh well, you know, Chris Paul, you know, what's what's his legacy if they lose? No, and like ESPN, no, no. Aaron Rodgers update. There is no update. <laughs> Devin Booker sucks. That's what the headlines on Get Up are. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like every show is Aaron Rodgers. It's the Aaron Rodgers show for like I three digress. months at a time. Sorry to interrupt. Anyway, you. my point just is is that everybody's talking about the fact that Chris Paul, you know, is is kind of been a letdown. And I think that, you know, the the uh, the 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 repercussions of that are that the Suns are not moving the ball. They're not playing their brand of basketball that got them here, that allowed them to, you know, beat, you know, the Jazz and the Clippers and the Lakers and all these quality teams, you know. No matter what you think of any of those teams, they are quality teams. They are, Those are good wins. And the only reason that that, you know, happened for the Suns is because they were playing their brand of basketball, which seemingly they've gotten a, a, a away from. You know, I've seen guys like Cam Johnson in small sample sizes in each of these games shoot really well. You know, the other night he was two for two or three of three. You know, and he only sees the ball like three, maybe four times the entire game. So I just look at this and I say, okay, Chris Paul is playing a lot of one-on-one. He's doing a lot of things that he doesn't normally do, which is leading to turnovers and putting them in bad positions. Yeah, I, and I, I think one of the more interesting parts about this series has been just the the breakdown in what got you here by the Phoenix Suns. Um, and we can sit here and we can talk about how great Giannis is and all the defensive plays and the moments, the alley-oop, the block. Absolutely, Giannis Antetokounmpo has been fantastic. The Suns are losing this series because they're not playing the way that they've played to get here. That much, to me, is very clear. I look at Chris Paul's massive decline here, and I know I've seen all the rumors he's injured. I love that the national media, you know, that it that covers the NBA, it's like Chris Paul doesn't look right. He looks tired. Yeah. He looks old. He looks like men- mentally he is fatigued because he's never been here. He's never played with this much pressure. That's what Chris Paul looks like. Do his hands hurt? Sure. Does his leg hurt? Okay. I don't know. But what I do know is he's on the floor, so he's held accountable for his performance. Yeah. And he continues to turn the ball over. He continues to be selfish. Now, has Devin Booker been great? No. That turn The other night he was fantastic, right up until he dribbled into a triple team inexplicably not pulling up for the mid-range, which was wide open, the Suns are not playing good basketball, and they're not playing the way that they played to get here. And, Jake, to me, that's what's going to define this series yeah. is the Bucks were able to play their style and really have inflicted their will on this series, and the Suns have not. Yeah, and and I think, you know, the, the Bucks are making adjustments where the Suns are not. You know, I, I look at... I look at I kind of throw out game one in terms of Giannis's performance because he was clearly dealing with some injuries. So I kind of throw that out for him. But I look at I look at game five versus game four. Game four, he was all about scoring and, and being very aggressive. Game five, clearly there was an adjustment made to to find the balance between playmaking uh, and scoring. And and I look at several of those. Uh, it's so funny that this happened because it reminded me of what we talk about with the Jazz all the time which is, you know, your best player, whether it's Giannis or or Donovan Mitchell or Devin Booker, whoever your team is, that player has to have the ability to to drive the paint, get the defense to collapse, and kick the ball to the wide-open shooter. And Giannis did that in Game 5, and it led to great looks. It led to wide-open looks that they made, um, and it really got their offense going. And, and I think, to me, when I look at the Suns, I, I just sit here and say, I'm still seeing a ton of Devin Booker one-on-one. I'm still seeing a ton of Chris Paul one-on-one. And I'm fine with Devin Booker playing one-on-one because he's one of the best scorers in the world. But I'm not fine with Chris Paul playing one-on-one. And really, I'm not fine, generally speaking, with the lack of ball movement that this team has had probably the last three games. That's why they're losing the series. They're not moving the ball. Well, and I, I'm curious the the fallout from this series because you're seeing the media, whether they're good questions or bad questions, well, they're rather they're how bad the question are because <laughs> these are terrible questions. I mean, there's there's no doubt. I'm going to play this one in a second, but I think there's more to the Chris Paul Devin Booker dynamic than anybody's going to let on. And I'm telling you, 
this is a crucial moment in time for Devin Booker's long-term viability as a Phoenix Sun. And then you hear the media, and again, this is a, a terrible question, but you hear them wondering aloud about the relationship between Devin Booker and Chris Paul. Thanks, fellas. Uh, this is obviously a really tough loss. Devin, how frustrated are you uh, for Chris right now? Next, next question, please. <laughs> Not humoring that question. He ain't humoring that First question. First of all, who's the asshole who asked that question? Because that makes you, you're a jerk. Not only did you have music playing in the background on your side of the Zoom connection, number one. Number two, you asked a really stupid question. Horrible. Like, I don't know what you thought they were going to say to that question. Well, we hate each other, and this will be the last, you know, time that we ever sit up on the uh, podium together to talk to the media because we can't stand each other. What, did you really think that they would give you anything on that? Like, like here, here's I, I, I caught a couple of these. So here's another one. Book was just asked about their, their perspective moving forward in the series. Listen to his answer on this one. I mean, one at a time. You know, our focus is the Milwaukee right now. Um, you know, that's how you have to do these series one game at a time. And, um, yeah, that's it. Perfectly fine answer. Hey, what's your perspective moving forward now that you're down 3-2 and probably going to lose the NBA Finals? Well, we got to take it one game at a time. But instead, we get Bozo Buckets over here Bozo as, buckets. Asking, asking Devin Booker if he's frustrated with Chris Thanks, Paul. Thanks, fellas. Uh, this is obviously a really tough loss. Devin, how frustrated are you uh, for Chris for right now? Chris Paul. Next, right. next question, please. How frustrated are you for Chris Paul? Lost. Devin, how frustrated are you uh, for Chris right now? Like, what a stupid, like, I, anyway, what did you think he was going to say? Uh, Edgar Garcia says, good morning, good series, good show, my boys. What's up, Edgar? Good yeah, to good see morning. you. Jordan Crabtree says, Booker was not very clutch on that last play. Yeah, it was really surprising. You know? Shocking. Like, you, you, it, it almost had, so the Bucks score, right? The, the Bucks, you know, they do their thing, and the Suns get the ball back, and, Booker's bringing it up, and I'm like, okay, this is this is this, this is, perfect. is his moment. This is his moment. Like, this is like not that I'm saying that Devin Booker is anywhere in the same conversation as Michael Jordan, but when I saw that play developing, I was like, okay, this is setting up the same way the Jordan play is set up. He's going to bring it up. He's going to get his matchup, and he's going to score it. Right? He's gonna he's gonna get the one on one, and he's gonna take it to the elbow and and do his thing. And then what does he do instead? Like, you know, he drives to the basket. But he just kind of stops, and we're seeing this become a thing with the Suns, whether it's Book, whether it's CP3. They want to drive into the paint, not rise up, and turn it over. And I don't know, like, where this came from or, like, where I don't get it. The, the whole idea of driving the paint and stopping came from. But in whether we're talking the NBA Finals or Game 1 of the regular season— Driving the paint just to hold the ball never works. That's a bad idea. Yeah, and uh, the interesting thing is uh, Ace says you've slurped Devin Booker all season long. We appreciate the slurp reference, yes, as always. Yes, absolutely. Uh, thank you, Ace. Uh, you've slurped Devin Booker all season long. Are you ready to admit the moment was too big for him? Wet, like I'm book. Okay, now, listen, I understand that I don't know much about sports. Mm -hmm. Like, I understand that... This is the first time I've ever seen an NBA Finals game. Um, and frankly, I didn't even watch the game. We just sit here and talk about it. Much like jazz basketball, we don't watch basketball. Right, yeah. But yeah. It's so, right. you know. Mm. Uh, but really, do you feel like the moment was too big for Devin Booker? You feel like Devin Booker just, you know, the, the, the NBA Finals spotlight was, was just too much and... Should I? Uh, here's the Devin Booker box score, and you tell me if the moment was too much. 17 of 33, 40 points, three dimes, and four boards. Okay, so basically 50% from the field. The guy dominated, and the moment was too much. Bad alert, major bad alert. Like, I, I don't even know. And listen, Ace is a diehard Jazz fan. I totally get it. But is there anybody who believes that Devin Booker is hurting the Suns? Because I don't. And I thought it was interesting the other night. Jeff Van Gundy on, on the, the tube was talking about how Devin Booker, you know, these points are great, but they're not going to help the Suns win the game. And I agreed with that at the moment. 
but then he pulls up and hits that incredible turnaround three. Yeah. And you just realize he understands what he has to do. Is there anybody who wouldn't want Devin Booker on their team? No, and I think we got to talk about this whole dynamic of Devin Booker not getting the ball three, four possessions in a row when he's clearly hot and having a big game. And know? they go full, it was four possessions consecutively in the fourth quarter where, where he just doesn't touch the ball. They never even looked at him. And, and this is part of, and, and I do think that this is a fair conversation with where Devin Booker is at. I think that there's this conversation and this dynamic on this team right now where Devin Booker sort of has to take this. Uh, I can't believe I'm saying this at this point because he's in the NBA Finals dropping 40. Like, I can't believe this is a conversation. But it's almost like he's got to take yet another step, you know, to get to, like, this next level to where, you know, guys like Durant are, guys like, you know, Steph are, like any of the major players on their team. You notice that for the Lakers, LeBron never goes to possession without touching the ball. Never happens. Never. Like, very, very rarely does do they have an offensive possession where LeBron James does not have the ball in his hands. Yeah. And, and I'm just sitting here saying, dude, the guy's on fire. He's 50% from the field. He just hit a huge three, and now he can't get the ball back? But this is why James Harden didn't want to play with Chris Paul. This is why Blake Griffin and, and Chris Paul were frustrated with each other. Yeah. Because Chris Paul does not think about the what's best for the team. Chris Paul shoots the ball a lot. Chris Paul tries to make the spectacular play when all you need to do is reverse the basketball. Yeah. The the play to Mikhail Bridges in the corner where he almost threw the ball into the third deck. Yeah. And Mikhail Bridges tries to save it in bounds. It leads to a fast break and a dunk. And I, I, I just I continue to ask myself, what is Chris Paul looking at? Because again, all he has to do is reverse the ball and that Mikhail Bridges you know, save turns into a three point look. Yeah. I, and it, it's the simple play. So you can blame Devin Booker all you want. My feeling is Chris Paul is killing the Suns in this series. And I thought what you texted me the other night, we got to talk about that the Suns are better without Chris Paul on the floor. They well, are. You know what? They are. You know, I look at the Suns without Chris Paul on the floor, and I know this sounds insane. And, and I'm, I really am truly not trying to do the whole like, shock jock hot take guy take like i watched this game and i say okay when chris paul was off the floor i look at the speed with which the team plays with right i look at how many how many more easy opportunity get they get how many more times they're going to the foul line because they're in transition pushing the pace you notice that Giannis isn't in an opportunity to make these series defining defensive plays when the Suns play with the pace that they've typically played with the whole season that's one of the things that has defined this team the fact that they can play fast and they have the stamina in their team to do it for 48 minutes yeah. and, and that to me is what's crazy about this we've been talking about Chris Paul slowing this team down the entire year Yet when he goes out and he's injured and misses some games, they seemingly are fine. And why is that? Because they play faster, they get easier looks, and it keeps Devin Booker in rhythm. So he's knocking shots down. Yeah, and it's this whole thing with point book. I don't know. Are they better with Devin Booker bringing the ball up? Not on a full-time basis. For five-minute stretches, they certainly are. Because they get. I, I agree with you. And when the Suns play fast and they're more aggressive – the ball tends to move a little more because you're playing frenetically. The other thing that I'm shocked about, they can't throw the ball into the post with any kind of purpose or effect right now. It's incredible that DeAndre Ayton, I think, has really struggled in the last three games of this series. I, at home, on the road, like it, it's inexplicable. And the only thing that I can come up with is these guys just look mentally tired. Yeah. Um, you know, outside a book and 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 again, I as Ace said, I slurp book on a regular basis. Outside of Devin Booker, they look mentally tired. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, obviously Book had his moment uh in game three, I guess that was. But I, I just think these guys look tired. Is this series over? What do you what do you expect tomorrow night in Milwaukee? Uh I I have a hard time believing that the Suns win this game in Milwaukee just because, you know, you're on the road. This feels like Giannis's moment, you know, to to win his first championship. However, it would be 
you know, it would be rather foolish to not, you know, mention the fact that the Suns have been, you know, this season one of the best road teams. Monty Williams is a phenomenal coach, and the feel is a little bit different when you're playing with your season on the line. So the the casual play of Chris Paul, I feel like, probably is a lot less. I feel like there's that, that yes. sense of urgency returns to the team. So, you know, my, my feeling is 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 this is a, a tightly contested game that comes down to shot making in the end. I mean, I, I frankly be really surprised if the Suns, you know, got blown out by 15 in game six in an elimination game for your series or for your season. That just would be very surprising. So a lot of me wants to say, that, yeah, the Bucks win this game. They probably win it by five. You know, it's in Milwaukee. But then this other big part of me says, hey, this is the Phoenix Suns. I mean, this is a team that has proven they can win on the road, and I don't feel like they're that far away from getting to a game seven. They just got to put a complete game together. So I, what, what do I expect? I don't know, man. It, it's really hard for me to answer that question because I can really see it truly going both ways. James says, just realizing that Booker's steal moment is like our car alone getting the ball stolen by Jordan, and then we will be haunted by that forever. The Suns will be haunted by that forever. Well, why do A, why do Jazz fans hate the Suns so much? B, why do Jazz fans hate Devin Booker so much? It's not his fault you drafted Trey Lyles. Like I'm trying to figure this I, out with with Jazz and Suns. Like, listen, I I I I have a pretty good feeling as to why they do. They they feel like the the Jazz, um, you know, are the Suns, but the 2.0 version. They feel like the Jazz are a better team. They feel like the Jazz were the number one seed and and should have gotten way farther. And you know, like that that injuries kept them from an NBA Finals appearance. And I'm just sitting here saying that no. that, that that's just not accurate. You know, that's just not. Yeah, somebody needs to explain to me why why that is. I mean, I, I just... I don't know. We're going to talk to you guys in a minute. But I, I'm, I'm telling you, this Suns team, I, I, I am convinced this is the best team in the Western Conference. Um, and we can have the if healthy conversations... If everybody's healthy, the Suns are better than the Jazz. Are they better than the Lakers? Probably not, but nobody would be better than the Lakers. Um, I'm just amazed how many Jazz fans hate the Suns and root against Devin Booker. It's not his fault that that Dennis Lindsay is terrible drafting players. No, he's not. He's a beloved individual in the community. Yeah, right. Um, that's incredible to me. It, it really is. Gabe Ledley, good morning to you. Um, and Gabe, listen, man, I like you. You and I are friends. Why would you post so many hurtful pictures of your time at the Diamondbacks game? <laughs> why? I mean, like, wh why? And, you know, like, the thing that's amazing is your kid hits a dinger on the kid's field at, at the Diamondbacks stadium. The Diamondbacks have, have dingers. Yeah, the Diamondbacks have this cool little field where kids can play. And Gabe Ledley's kid, Little Lope, like, hits a bomb in this mm -hmm. video. And I'm like, okay, cool. That'll be, like, that, the coup de grace. No, what's the next slide? It's the next photo Gabe posts. Oh, the, the Diamondbacks beat the Cubs. Like, why would you do that? Like, it's just degrading to me. I anyway, don't give up, baby. Yeah, I don't, you know, I, whatever. Anyway, the point is, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, the Cubs, if no. the Cubs pay Javier Baez $200 million, I'm going to go stand in front of a bus. Like, so you should probably start rooting for them to do that. I mean, That's the, quite enough. Yeah, get the it. point is, I, you cannot pay him $200 million to swing it, swing it sliders that are five feet outside. Anyway, on the Suns, the point is, you can't, <laughs> if you're a Jazz fan, you can hate the Suns. I guess that's fine. You can do that. But it's not Devin Booker's fault Dennis Lindsay did not draft him. Oh. Come on. Uh, Anthony McCoy says, small market team jealousy. Could be. Could be. I think the funny thing is, Jazz fans are not, do they have small marketitis? Yes. Do they really yes. though? Yes. Do they overvalue the Jazz? Certainly. No. Well, yeah. Do they have small marketitis? Yes. Oh my God! No free agents ever coming here. Um, well, that's not small make... marketitis. That's just the truth. I okay, mean, okay. Well, whatever you want to call it, then you know. I don't. I don't know. That could be. Absolutely, that could be. But uh, so you think the series is over tomorrow? <sighs> Yeah, I as much as I hate to say it, I I think that um I I it's just it, it it is hard for me to envision them going on the road in an elimination game against Giannis and Giannis being denied that moment in his in his home stadium. That's that to me is tough. 
I and again, I will say, does Chris Paul have the muster for one game? If he can muster it up for one game, the Suns can still win the series. They're not. They're not. Listen, they're still in the series. But but again, it's like having to ask: Does Chris Paul? have to muster, like, have what it takes to win one game on the road yeah. is a ridiculous question to me. What happened to, oh, my God, this is his first appearance in the NBA Finals and whatever it takes. I know. And, like, what happened to all that, you know? Chris Paul is on the verge of becoming the first player to lose four best-of-seven series in which his team led 2-0. Yeah. What else did you say about Chris Paul? That he's not a winner. He's not a winning player. He never has been and never will be. The only other player with three best of seven losses in which his team led 2-0, Blake Griffin. Mm -hmm. And they were teammates when they both did that. Yeah. It's never happened before. And I am amazed that here we are with this situation, and it's not Devin Booker. It's not Blake Griffin. It's not James Harden. It's Chris Ball. Yeah. And, and you know what the funny thing is? That we see this routinely – on teams that are good that are not great, is it usually it's when you're one guy away? Yeah, like the Jazz are three guys away from winning a championship. You look at a but team, Rudy, come on. <clears throat> you look at a team like the. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going down the Rudy Gobert <laughs> rabbit hole. Well done, well done, avoiding I'm not, the trap I'm door. Not, I like it. I'm not. But if you look at these play, if you look at the Suns, the Suns are truly one player away. Yeah. It, it they need Chris Paul to be better. Well, and you look at the Bucks and they've got Middleton and Holiday and PJ Tucker and obviously Giannis. Well, why are they winning? Because Giannis and Middleton it, it now are getting contributions from Drew Holiday. Yeah, and, and I feel like the relationship between Giannis and Middleton has improved as this series has gone on. Like I was saying, I really felt like in game 5 Giannis really had the mentality of playmaking early in the game, getting his teammates involved yeah. so that later in the game they were in rhythm, you know, in case he wasn't making plays. Well, and by the way, this is – and I know we talked about this last week, but the hysteria over Team USA losing two exhibition games. Well, Yeah, get the hell out of here. Go ahead and dude. put Drew Holiday, Chris Middleton, and Devin Booker on that team, and then we can talk about what happens if they lose. Yeah. Because they're not going to lose. I mean, the, the way that, yeah, anyway, those three guys, by the way, are going to the Olympics as soon as the series is over. Um, but I just, I'm, a, I'm amazed. I'm going to take the Suns to win game six and go back to Phoenix and then ask me, how, uh, ask me about game seven after game six because I need to see how that game plays out. You think Book's got to have 40? I think Book's got to have a massive game for them to win. I, and this, is, this, again, goes back to game four. If he'd have scored 50 and not gotten in foul trouble in game four, they win. Yeah, and I do think that that's a great point. You know, Game 6 is another opportunity for him to have that that signature moment where he carries the Suns to the next game. You know? Yeah. Gabe Ledley um, did ask if the Suns go out uh, – if the Suns go out big sad in Game 6, does it accelerate Book to the Lakers? I actually think it does because I think – and I also wonder what happens to Chris Paul here. Because De I think Devin Booker has reached another level now. Mm -hmm. And I think that Chris Paul cannot stay with him. And I, uh, t much to your point, and I think I'm very proud of you as my offspring, like you came from my seed. So I'm Just very so you can go to Pound Town. Yeah, I'm very proud of you. Um, that was awkward. Anyway, the point is, you know, um, you um, said... Uh, um. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You were talking about that, you know, Devin Booker and Chris Paul and that that relationship. I'm curious what happens. Yeah. And like where do you go if you're the Suns? Do you bring back Chris Paul? Yeah, I mean, you, look, we're talking about a team that, you know, is in the NBA Finals. So, I mean, you have a great team. I just think that I, I think that the conversation is not do you bring him back? I I, I think they're probably just assuming they're gonna bring him back, but I think the conversation has to be you know, let, let's assume that the reason Chris Paul's performance has dipped so much is because he's tired. Let's just, if that's the yeah. case, you know, then the conversation is going to be, okay, well, you know, what what do we need to do to, to take the miles off Chris Paul? This is the whole, you know, load management conversation and not playing him as much early in the season and, you know, finding that balance. So I don't know, man. I, I, I think the other side of that conversation is you're getting three days off in between games and you're still not able to 
you know, to, to, to be the best version of you. So that's why I say, I don't know if it's actually a tired thing or if it's a, he's playing with a bum this and a bum that thing or, or if he's like, just, see, but I don't care about that, but, but I understand, like, I don't necessarily care about it either, but I think when we're talking about the future of the club, it's important to understand why Chris Paul isn't performing right now. Cause the fact is, is in the first two games he did perform and was a big reason why they won. And everyone wanted to run out the Chris Paul was carrying Devin Booker crap. But now when Chris Paul's not, not doing anything and Booker's going for 40, you know, it's a different conversation. So that's why I say it matters why he's not performing. Um, Jordan McDonald says CP3 has to play great for Phoenix to win. Booker is amazing, but he gets tunnel vision and starts playing hero ball, which hurts his team. I actually think he doesn't play enough hero ball. I think that Devin Booker was trying to drive and kick Yeah, when he turned that ball over the other night. And to me, you just got to shoot. But when you don't give him the ball on four straight possessions – it takes him out of his rhythm. That's two, three minutes of game time. Yeah, and I, I think that I think Devin Booker. I just think Devin Booker's gone to a new level, and I think guys like Cam Johnson. And when I look forward, Cam Johnson's going to be a star in this league. He'll he'll be Ray Allen. I feel like he's a Ray Allen type player. Mm -hmm. He'll never be an alpha. He'll never be your best player. But man, is he important to you? I look at Mikhail Bridges. I think you have to you have to find a way to win with Chris Paul. You cuz you're going to put the band back together. Yeah. You're going to make one more run at this. But Chris Paul has to be better. Yeah. And I I don't know if the experience of this or it's shocking how far he's fallen. Um Omar says good morning Monty and Skippy looks like the Bucks are rutting are in rutting mode. Oh. That's I believe that means that's mating season for deers. Uh for the deers. Okay. They're deers. Okay, yeah, sure. All I right. know it's dear. Uh, go Jazz. Hating, hating. yes, not CP3 fan. Rutting bucks are dangerous creatures. Well, when any, when any buck that's horny, you know. They're just out. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, uh, not, I'm, not, I'm not humoring this horny, horny deer buck conversation. Why, you don't want to eat some venison? No. Nope. Okay. Uh, <laughs> truth. Uh, Achilles Jean-Pierre says, if it's Chris Paul, it's also Doc Rivers, question mark. Mm, yeah, I mean, yeah. you can make a case for Doc Rivers, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jordan Clarkson says, oh, dear. <laughs> Brandon Whiteside says, ch ch, -ch chokers Chris Paul's choking. I have no doubt about There's that. There's no doubt about that. Uh, I have no, no doubt. He's Devin Booker's not. I look at Mikhail Bridges. I look at uh, DeAndre Ayton. I think it's just young. Uh, the, the role players, you can't say role players choke, mainly no. because those guys aren't getting the ball as nearly as much as they need to. And again, that goes right back to what I said about 15 minutes ago, about the fact that they've gone away from the whole the whole concept of moving the ball to get the looks that they need to get. When they do that, guys like Jay Crowder and Mikhail Bridges, they'll knock those shots down. They will. And and again, and this is a point you had made while we were watching the game, they're not shooting enough threes. They're not. Know? And I think... Uh, I think it was after game four, Monty Williams had said, I mean, you know, 23 three point attempts is not enough. I mean, we need to be, we need to have more. They're playing conservative basketball. Yeah. And it's because Chris Paul gets hot in the mid range. So the ball stops getting kicked out. Yeah. So to, to, it, it, we'll see. This is, this is what defines a team. This is, if you want to compare it to the Jazz, when you lose in the finals, what happens to you in the in the immediate aftermath of that defines your overall legacy. Well, and this is clearly a moment for for this particular team. I mean, yes. it's game six, elimination game, on the road, ton of adversity. What are you going to do? Yeah. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. I mean, Suns have to be on Scott Foster alert. Yeah, no kidding. Scott Foster. Oh, does he have this game? Uh, you know, I don't know who the officials, I can look it up, but I don't know who it's going to be. Um, but yeah, the, all that talk about, oh, Scott Foster. Wasn't that Scott Foster who Chris Paul has lost like 13 games in a row or yeah. whatever it was? Yes. Wasn't that the, yeah. yeah. So, you it's, know, it's just. It's not a. And and that's a talking point, I feel like, in game six. You know, this is an elimination game. Uh, we've talked so much about over the last, you know, two weeks about this series and, and how the officials have played a role and, you know, the fact that the the NBA wants this series to go seven. So if the NBA wants this series to go seven, you would think that they would, would not blow the whistle a lot in this in this game. I think it'll be interesting to see what happens. Yeah. I think that Giannis holding the jersey probably gets called in this game. Because I do think the NBA would love seven games. Well, yeah. Um, 
And so the officiating on Giannis has to change. The uh, ref assignments are not out until game day. Um, you know, it, it, yeah, we'll see. Uh, Tanner Plummer says, morning, guys. I have a feeling the Suns are going to win this game. Uh, and or this series, excuse me. And I don't eh. think that that's unrealistic. I, I, I that's why I said like I think it, it, it. I can truly see it going both ways. Like I can see one side of it being, yeah, it's Giannis's moment. You're going home. Like this is it. Like if if the Bucks lose this game, Game Seven in in Phoenix, you don't like the the prospects of that, right? But then for the Suns, I'm sitting here saying, okay, their mentality is definitely going to be all right. We just need to win one game. And then let's we'll re we'll regroup for game seven and that'll be a different beast all to its own. So I don't know, man. I I I, I wouldn't be surprised if the Suns found a way to win this game. I just think that it's asking a lot to go to Milwaukee in an elimination game uh on their floor when Giannis is is this close to winning a championship. Well, and, and the thing that is amazing to me is it's not like the Suns are not getting opportunities to score. Yeah. Like they're getting anything they want. Like whether the the Bucks play zone, whether they play man, like the 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 Suns are routinely getting drive and kick. Yeah. Um. The the thing that's killing the Suns is they cannot effectively throw the ball to the post, and I just don't understand it. Uh -huh. Like the pull up three is there, the mid range is there, the fast break is there. Like they're getting anything they want, and they just can't exit. They can't convert. It. it I mean. Anyway. I don't think the fast break is there enough for them. I I I think that's disappeared because since, Chris Paul yeah. walks the ball up the floor. Yeah, and he wants to. And and Drew Holiday's been you know playing press defense basically the whole series. So you campaign know. plays with his hair on fire. Yeah, and that's why they're better when Chris Paul sits. Like those third quarter stints, third quarter the other night when the the Suns built that nine point lead. Why was that? Chris Paul was not on the floor. Yeah. So I, and the Bucks I, were playing most of their starters. By the way, it's not like they did that against the the bench. Like they were playing most of their guys. Yeah. It, it, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to take the Suns to win Game Six, and then we'll see what happens in Game Seven.